What is going on guys? Welcome back to the C programming tutorial series for beginners. In today's video, we're going to talk about loops. So let us get right into it. All right, so let us talk about loops in C. Now, for those of you who are new to programming in general, a loop is essentially just a block of code that is executed repeatedly as long as a certain condition is met. So up until now, when we programmed, we always specified certain things to happen. And when we specified them, they happened once and then we moved on to the next statement. But sometimes you might want to automate certain things by having a block of code that you execute over and over again. You just write it once, but you execute it over and over again as long as a certain condition is met. And this is what we use loops for. Um, the while loop is actually the most simple loop. So we're going to use it to introduce the whole concept. Essentially, it's like an if statement that you run over and over again. Let's say again, we have this if statement here that we talked about in the last video. We have an if statement and uh, in these parentheses here, we have a certain condition. If this condition is met, we enter the block of code. So here we have some code to execute. If this condition is true, we enter the block. If it's false, we leave the block and we continue with the rest of the code. Now, if we now replace this if statement here with a while statement, what happens is that this condition um, is the thing that keeps the loop running. So now we enter the loop if the condition is met. So if this returns true, we enter the loop similar to an if statement. But the difference is that we don't leave this block. We execute it over and over again, as long as this condition returns true. Now, obviously, this means that we need to somehow make this condition fail sooner or later, because otherwise we have an endless loop. Um, but this is done inside of the loop, we progress towards the condition usually, unless we want to have an endless loop, obviously. So for example, let's say we have a simple integer called counter and we start with zero. What we can do here is we can say while this counter is less than 10, do something. For example, what we can do here is we can print the value of the counter like that. This is one thing that we can do. Now the problem with this code here is that it would constantly print the value over and over again without stopping. Why? Because this counter is always zero and it doesn't progress towards 10. So what we can do is we can just say counter equals counter plus one. And of course, we learned in operators that we can replace this by counter plus equals one. And one thing that I forgot to mention in the operator video is that we have also so called increment operator, uh, where we can not only say plus equals one, but we can just say counter plus plus to increase it by one. The difference is, of course, that here we can also pass five, for example, to increase by five. Here we always increase by one. Um, and I want to take the time here to also talk a little bit about these uh, increment and decrement operators because I skipped them in the operator videos uh, or in the operator video. So counter plus plus essentially just increases the counter by one. It doesn't make a big difference in this case if you use counter plus plus or plus plus counter. However, the difference is that this is a post increment, this is a pre increment. The difference is that, for example, if I now print this, so if I print, if I do this, for example, inside of the print statement, if I say counter plus plus, what this means is that I first print counter, and then I increase it by one. So it would print zero and then increase it to one. And next time it would pr uh, print one and increase it to two. Whereas if I say plus plus counter, it's going to first increase and then print. So it's going to never print zero because the first thing it does is it increases it by one. So the first thing it prints is one. This is just the difference here between pre increment and post increment. If you do the plus plus before the variable name, you increase before you use it. If you do it afterwards, you print first and then you increase it. So we can do it like that as well. Um, and of course, just for the sake of compl uh, uh, completeness here, we also have counter minus minus, which does the same thing. And of course, minus minus counter, just it subtracts one instead of adding one. So we can actually go ahead now and run this. So we can say GCC main C minus O main. And we can run main and you can see zero, one, two, three, four, five, and so on up until nine, uh, nine. If I change this now to plus plus counter, There you go, you can see it starts with one because we do a pre increment. Maybe this is what we want to have because one to 10 
seems more natural than 0 to 9. At least to non-programmers, this would be the case. So this is a simple while loop. This condition is what keeps the loop running. The loop is executing the code over and over and over again uh, until the condition is met. And of course, I can increase this number to 100 here if I want to. And if I now recompile and run this, you can see it prints 100 numbers. Uh, so it's just automating things. Of course, I could also do this manually. But the good thing is that I can also, if I remove this and I say scanf percent d uh, not backslash n and counter like that. I can also specify. Uh, oh, actually, I didn't want to do that. Counter starts at zero int limit is what I want to enter here. So limit scanf like that limit don't forget the end and now instead of going up until 100 I go up until the limit and now the user has the control over the limit so I can now also say 9 and it prints up until 9 I can say 100 it prints up until 100 I can say 2 it prints up until 2 and I can say a thousand and it does it a thousand times so what happens if, for example, the counter starts at 10? And then I set a limit below 10. Now, first of all, if I set 20, it still works because it then counts from uh, 11 to 20. Uh, but if I say, for example, the limit is seven, then nothing happens because it doesn't even enter the while loop. This is the difference between the while loop and the do while loop. The do while loop looks at the condition after executing the block at least for once. So if I say do, and now I will do the same thing, I will comment this here out. Uh, if I say do print f percent d backslash n plus plus counter. Uh, and then I have the while block down here. So counter less than limit. This is a do while loop. We have a do block first. And then the condition is in the end. Uh, instead of the hat, we have it uh, in the bottom of the loop. So if I now run this, first of all, it's going to have the exact same behavior if I enter uh, a number that works. So if the condition is met, it's, it has the same behavior as a while loop. The difference here is only that if I enter something like one, it is still going to execute the do block at least once. So this is the only difference. The while loop and the do while loop are the same if the condition is met once. Otherwise, if the condition is not met in the first place, it's still going to do it once. So it's still going to um, execute this block once and then it's, it's going to see, okay, the condition is not met, so I'm not going to do it again. This can be useful for menus, for example. Maybe you want to have a menu um, that says, okay, while not quit, do it, but you want to display it at least once because maybe uh, you have a certain condition in the beginning that is unset, undefined, you want to do it once. And then after this iteration, you're going to have the condition in the end met or not met. So last but not least, we also have the full loop. And as I already mentioned, the full loop in C is different from the full loop in Python for those of you who are Python programmers, because in Python, we actually have a for each loop, not a real full loop. And in C, we have an actual full loop. Uh, which is structured the following way. We have the for keyword, and then we have these parentheses here, which have three elements separated by semicolons. So first of all, we have the initialization of the control variable. So for example, int i equals zero, this is the thing that we look at. Then we have a certain condition, for example, i being less than 100. And then we have the action that we take with the control variable, for example, i plus plus. So what happens here is that this loop initializes in the first iteration or before the first iteration, it initializes the control variable i with the value zero. This loop keeps going as long as i is less than 100. And with each iteration, it increases i by one. And then we have the body, the, the body of the loop where we have the actual uh, code logic. So these are the three parts of a full loop, we have the initialization, the condition and usually an increment, a decrement, a division or something, something that progresses towards the condition. And the control variable is the focus in this parentheses, uh, in, inside of those parentheses here. And for example, what I can do with that here, uh, this essentially this loop is executed 100 times. And I can now, for example, say printf 
hello world backslash n. And this is going to be printed 100 times now. Essentially, as you can see, and I can also change this by saying percent %d. And I can pass i here. There you go. And we get the same result as we got with the while loop. Um, now, usually for loops are used to work with arrays, with collections, with strings, because um, one, one use case of that is we're going to talk about arrays in a future video. But if you have arrays, you have certain positions. You can imagine arrays to be like lists of elements, element at position zero, element at position one, two, and so on. And if you want to go through all the elements, what you do is you say, okay, i equals zero for the first index, as long as i is less than the length of the list or the string or the array, increase i with each iteration and then process the individual element by specifying the index i and so on. So for loops are very useful. We're going to talk about those. Um, we're going to need those oftentimes in algorithms. Uh, we're going to talk about them again when we talk about arrays. Um, but this is the third and final type of loop in C. So that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.